I'm Amy. I'm Kelly. I'm Bethany. We are part, part of the General, General Education, Education Nurse Team. Team. The following informative presentation was developed by the General Education School Nurse Team to help guide you through this unprecedented start to the school year. Our goal of this presentation is to answer your questions as they relate to COVID-19. We want to share with you how COVID-19 affects Dearborn Public Schools this school year and how we as a district are planning to help stop the spread of this virus. The district is preparing for staff to come back to school. We care about you and your safety is our first priority. Our goal is to keep community exposures as isolated events and prevent them from spreading into community outbreaks. We know that you love the Dearborn School community and will do your part to educate and follow protocols. What we do in school buildings now, even before our students return, is so important to this task. Let's answer some questions about COVID-19. During this presentation, you will learn the required protocols implemented to help stop the spread of COVID-19. Coronavirus disease is an illness caused by a virus that can spread from person to person. The virus that causes COVID-19 is a new coronavirus that has spread throughout the world. Symptoms of COVID-19 may appear 2 to 14 days after exposure to the virus. People with COVID-19 have reported experiencing a wide range of symptoms from mild to severe illness. Pre-screening staff and students will be required before entering buildings. Warning signs that COVID-19 is a medical emergency include trouble breathing, persistent pain or pressure in the chest, confusion, inability to arouse or to stay awake, bluish lips or face. Call 911 immediately if these symptoms appear. COVID-19 spreads through droplets, the small particles that enter the air when we cough, sneeze, laugh, sing, yell, and talk. Droplets spread by sharing personal items like drinks, hookahs, vape pens, silverware, and other things that go from one person's mouth to another. COVID-19 can also spread through aerosols. Those are smaller particles created when we breathe, talk, sing, sneeze, or cough, and through objects where droplets and aerosols have settled. We can reduce the spread of COVID-19 by efforts to increase outdoor air ventilation, frequent hand washing, not touching your face, frequent cleaning and disinfection, and also using automatic and touchless controls. Many factors influence if you will get COVID-19 after being exposed to the virus. The first aspect is how much of the virus you were exposed to. The more virus you were exposed to, the more likely you are to get sick. For example, a person who is coughing and sneezing without a mask on is exposing you to more virus than someone who has no symptoms and is wearing a mask. Sitting directly next to a person who has COVID-19 talking face to face exposes you to more virus than sitting six feet away with your back to them. Another factor that influences your risk of contracting COVID-19 is the length of time you were exposed to the virus. For example, if you shared a classroom all day for several days with a person who has COVID-19, you are at greater risk, even if your seat was not within six feet of the infected person. A third factor is your personal health. Having a healthy immune system and using risk reduction methods decreases your vulnerability to contracting COVID-19. You can help stop the spread of germs that can make you and others sick. 
Wash your hands often. Wear a face covering. Cover your coughs and sneezes. Keep six feet of space between you and others. By following these requirements, we can limit community exposures to isolated events and prevent them from spreading into a community outbreak. We know that you love Dearborn Schools community and will do your part. Let's teach the students the importance of hand washing. Let's teach students to cover all coughs and sneezes. We've been doing this for years, but now we need to add teaching important safety tips for wearing face masks. Always clean your hands before and after touching your mask. Your mask should always cover your nose and chin. You should exchange your mask if it becomes wet or soiled. Carefully remove your mask before eating and drinking. Per the governor's executive order, all employees must conduct a daily self-screening prior to entering the workplace. A questionnaire covering symptoms and suspected or confirmed exposures to someone with COVID-19 is part of the entry protocol. The screening will look similar to this, either as a hard copy or a virtual screener. When everyone is doing their part, it builds confidence that the workplace is a safe place. If you answered yes to any of the screening questions, stay home and contact your immediate supervisor and primary health care provider. COVID-19 absences will not be penalized. Your supervisor and human resources will direct you to the correct forms and inform you of your rights and responsibilities. We can't emphasize enough that you need to stay home when you are sick. For the health and safety of our students and staff, Executive Order 2020-145 requires students to be screened for symptoms of COVID-19 before entering the school building. The screening protocol will be given to families and will look similar to this tool. So what happens when someone at school gets COVID-19? First, the school and health department learn about the case. Only a select few at the school will know the identity of the person. The COVID positive person's identity must be kept confidential to respect their privacy, as well as follow regulations of FERPA and HIPAA. The school will assist the health department in determining close contacts to the positive case and what areas of the school will need additional cleaning. Next, contact tracing begins. A person with COVID-19 is considered contagious starting 48 hours before they showed symptoms, or if they never had symptoms from the date of their positive test. Finally, close contacts are quarantined. A close contact is someone who is within six feet of an infected person for at least 15 minutes. Close contacts to a person with COVID-19 are at risk of getting sick and they must be identified and quarantined. Quarantine separates people who are exposed to a contagious disease to see if they become sick. The large majority of close contacts do not get COVID-19, but we must be cautious because it is so contagious. Per the CDC, a close contact is defined as a person being within six feet of an infected person for at least 15 minutes, regardless of if either individual was wearing a face mask. Examples of potential close contacts include classmates, lunchmates, playmates, teammates, opposing teammates, and other students in the school interacting in common areas such as the bathroom. If the contagious individual is a teacher and was not keeping six feet away from students while teaching and not following precautions, the entire class will need to quarantine. 
Students and staff should not go to school or any school activities or sports if they are having symptoms of COVID-19. If they start having symptoms while at school, they will be sent home. They may return to school based on guidance of their diagnosis. Families and staff must notify the school if they test positive for COVID-19. As long as there are cases of COVID-19 in the community, there is no way to prevent all risk of COVID-19 spread in schools. The goal is to keep school and school activities as safe as possible. If students do not go to school, they would still be at risk of contracting COVID-19 from their interactions in the community. Regarding testing, the staff member or the parent or guardian of the student will be instructed to call their health care provider and follow their guidance. An adult can also visit the website provided to find the closest COVID-19 testing location. Individuals would receive guidance from Wayne County Health Department for their specific situation. What if someone is exposed outside of school? Here are two scenarios. Scenario one, if a student or staff member is a household member or close contact of a COVID-19 positive case, the person is excluded from school until 14 days have passed since their last exposure to the COVID-19 positive person. Scenario two, if a person or staff member is a household member or close contact of someone who has symptoms and a pending COVID-19 test result, you are not in quarantine, so you may continue to attend school and should monitor for symptoms. Of course, if you develop symptoms, you should stay home and call your medical provider to be tested for COVID-19. In the event that the pending test result comes back positive, you will follow the previously outlined guidelines in scenario one above. If any household member tests positive, any person in the house is considered to be a close contact and should quarantine for a full 14 days. In all scenarios, we will follow direct guidance from Wayne County Health Department. Please visit these websites for more information. We are all in this together. The nurses are here to help answer questions and walk through our health and safety return to school guidelines. Please direct specific questions regarding your personal situation privately in order to protect personal information. Feel free to email our district nurses, your direct supervisor, and human resources. Our guidance for every COVID-19 situation will be taken from the Wayne County Health Department. Hi, I'm Carrie, District School Nurse. Hi, I'm Ola, District School Nurse. Since people can spread the virus before they know they are sick, it is important to wear your mask and to stay at least six feet away from others when possible, even if you or they do not have any symptoms. We will continue to follow new guidance as it becomes available. Let's model for the Dearborn community what is appropriate behavior during a pandemic. The old saying, we are all in this together, has never been more true than it is right now. And together, as we each do our part, we will get through this.